Good morning. Welcome to today's 1 million by 1 million strategy roundtable for entrepreneurs. Uh, this session is part of the 1 million by 1 million global virtual incubator, and our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue, build in global GDP, and 10 million jobs. As you can imagine, that is quite an audacious, ambitious mission, and it is entirely predicated upon your success. This is an 89th session, so we're doing this for a long time, and uh, we are delighted that you continue to participate and uh, find it useful. The session is being recorded. You will have a recording available both on our blog as well as on our YouTube channel. And we are announcing today a book that is called Other 99% Entrepreneurs, Fortune in the Middle of the Pyramid. It's a general book that is a collection of essays. Essentially, it is my quest for a model, a pragmatic, um, you know, viable, implementable framework for Capitalism 2.0, which I envision as democratic distributed capitalism. Go to a much broader range of entrepreneurs all around the world, not just the 1% or less than 1% that is today enjoying the real fruits of capitalism. So, um, check it out, and if we have time, we'll see how what kind of time we have. I may even read you a, a little chapter from the book. If you're joining us, if you're joining us on Twitter today, if you're live tweeting the show, please use the hashtag 1M1M. Our two handles are at 1M by 1M and at Mana. You're welcome to follow either or both. Our channel is 1M1M Roundtables, and that is uh, you're going to find the recordings of prior uh, roundtables, as well as you'll find other things like 1M1M FAQ videos, as well as cartoons that are funny for entrepreneurs. We could do a you know three uh, presentations with slides. Also going to have some time, I hope, to have you call and just chat and, and present your situations, ask questions and just get to know you. And meanwhile also please feel free to use the public chat to introduce yourselves, tell us where you're calling from and Get to know one another as well as give us an opportunity to get to know you. We love that. We love the networking part of these sessions. Um, we are going to start today with Anthony Vanden. Anthony, if you could unmute your line and tell us what you're working on, that would be great. Anthony, are you there? Um, I'm Anthony. Um, I'm the CEO of uh, Metron uh, Consulting, a uh, boutique um, um, technology firm uh, based in Bangalore. I uh, founded the company in um, 2008. I uh, 10 employees right now. And to grow the business uh, to $1 million uh, by end of uh, 2014. And what is revenue? We are doing. Uh, um, uh, 650k. Okay. Yeah, that's our company. Mm -hmm. And just to give some background, so <clears throat> you might be wondering, like, you know, you started in 2008. What were you doing for the last, uh, you know, five years? Um, I worked at uh, Yahoo as an engineering manager for uh, four years. In 2003 to 2000, um, when you worked at Yahoo, with the startup, <clears throat> you know, the startup bites you, and you try to go do something on your own. Um, yeah, so I quit and I tried to do a product company on my own for a few years and um, you know, we built a team and um, you know, basically I take the product anywhere and I have a team then why not build a boutique, boutique services firm, um, you know, try to work with uh, stock companies and, and uh, build a business out of it, you know, um, yeah, right now. And, uh, you know, Counter uh, CTO Sanjay Bhatt. Um He's in Bangalore. I'm in the area today. I mean, we, I came here to meet a um, customer. I'm uh, back this afternoon. 
Uh, today, um, was the first CTO of uh, Quicker, was managing the architecture, technology, and the scaling part of Quicker. And he also the uh, CEO at Computer Vista when uh, Pearson acquired the Vista. Okay. So I already moved back to India before I moved to India. Uh, <coughs> I actually, he's my next door neighbor, and we connected, and I came him to come part of Metron Consulting. Okay. The team is of 10 engineers, and we would like to keep it like a smaller team. And we bring 65 years of hands on technology and senior management experience. And in the company is a profit center. Uh, we don't have any uh, sales team as of now. Uh, and uh, I do most of the uh, you know sales. Uh, you know we come to the Bay Area, to the U.S. every meet with our customers and prospective leads. And our expertise um, in product management, software architecture, and uh, you know database applications. Current knowledge is we are focusing on um, LAMP stack, Java development, and uh, HTML5 development. Yes. Next slide, yeah. This differentiators, uh, you know, we ideate, we, uh, you know, we have the same application, you know, we execute, and then also help the customers to enhance uh, the application. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, involve hands-on, like, you know, most of the members are pretty senior team members, so. Customers from Anthony? Uh, sorry, Who are in customers? Um, our customer, uh, in our biggest customer is uh, Polyvore. Uh, it's a you know, technology company based in um, Mountain View. Mm -hmm. uh, they work with uh, iFood.tv, uh, with Grant. Yeah. But Vikrant and um, your other friend, uh, Gobi, they told me, you can summon us program. Um, that's why I'm here. Like, uh, I know about one number one number, but uh, I didn't really you know, do the site, you know, the blocks and other stuff, so start off pitching, and, uh, you know, in fact, we can't go be during this trip, but you have to, like, you know, we got that decision. Thank you. Uh, the power is our customer, iFood.tv is our customer. Uh, we work with uh, INSEA Business School, uh, and uh, we work with Composite Software. It's a data virtualization uh, company recently got acquired by um, Cisco. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with Fast Pencil, uh, another startup which got acquired by a publishing company in the East Coast. So, uh, to work with uh, you know startup companies, try to uh, focus on the engineering product and uh, grow with them. Okay. And like this. So the condition, like you know, the same as more we are working, you know, that was, um, you know, really talked about the customers. So I didn't mention it here. Um, so maybe for the next slide, yeah. So challenges like <coughs> how to grow our account with current customers. For the composite software is now bought by Cisco. So as soon as the Cisco acquisition happened, they said, the company, Anthony, you know, I know great, and but uh, things are changing. Uh, the same happened at uh, Fast Pencil also. Um, so the strategy of working, you know, growing with these current companies, that's kind of and it's a question mark for us. Like, uh, so idea was work with five customers, uh, try to get enough revenue uh, so that we have the first million dollar revenue mark. But now, out of the four customers, uh, two customers have been already acquired by these big companies, and that suddenly stopped our vertical growth within this organization. So, how do we kind of get over it? That is uh, my first question. You know, what you're doing is basically outsource product development work, right, or it being, becoming an extension of the engineering teams of companies in the valley. Uh, I don't call it like outsourcing. We become an extension arm of the product development in the valley. Which is outsource product development. Right? There are big companies that have been built on that model. If you look at persistent software or Symphony, um, these are companies that have, you know, they, they're much larger companies and they do a lot more than that. They do, uh, you know, a lot of other things, lots of maintenance work and so forth. But they start with that, with that basic premise of doing outsourced product development work. And, and there are actually lots of companies in the Bay Area that uh, are looking for small, you know, high-quality, high-end team to work with. Um, 
part of it is you kind of have to get in. I imagine that you got into the company that you're working with, Polyvore and iFood.tv and, and so forth. Uh, you know iFood is a, uh, is a 1M company as well. You have to connect with people who are um, are the early stages and are starting to put engineering teams together. Isn't that uh, what your experience is? That is correct, yeah. And who are also willing to spend some money, not, such, not just uh, sweat equity. That's correct, yeah. But all the right thing, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a tricky combination. You, They're willing to spend money or they have the budget to spend money. and then on top of that, they are will they are interested in outsourcing their, you know, a lunk of their engineering. That is the combination that you're looking for. And if you're talking about companies that are in that particular bracket, there are two specific characteristics: One is either they have funding or the revenues. So Vikrant's company has revenues. They don't have funding, but they have significant revenues. Um, they last year $3 million in revenue. So they can't afford to work with you and be a reasonable-sized client for you. And the other way you can get to companies that are early stage and can afford to work with are companies that have some amount of seed funding, preferably. Okay. Right? Yeah. So that puts you in the bracket of trying to find companies that are getting seed financing. Okay. Yeah. Then places where a lot of companies are hanging out that have seed financing oftentimes are in you know, co-working spaces or uh, you know in places like 1M1M. &M. Actually, 1M1M &M is full of companies that are that are stage companies and and we even have a lot earlier stage companies than um, you know than companies that have already seed funding we have companies that are in the process of raising seed funding and so forth so um, so one possibility is you could go uh, to kind of create your positioning with a few incubators in different places and uh, you know become a reliable resource for Incubators who are incubating companies. One one place where you would be able to find customers, and and you're not looking for that many customers. You're probably looking for just a few, right? I mean, it sounds like you're doing what um, to uh, you know two hundred three hundred thousand dollars per customer. Yeah, that's my idea to get to the first million, uh, you know, with two customers, and probably like to stick to that level because um, if you really do good engineering, this is my you know, my opinion, if you do really grow too many customers, you will not be able to do a good job. So get that then, you know, again, like, you know, line or like, you know, pivot later on. But, uh, yeah, that's my goal. I would prefer like four customers, but, yeah, if needed, five. Right. So one thing you could do is since you're coming to the Bay Area often and you're connected in the Bay Area, you can go uh, talk to the incubators in different, um, you know, lots of incubators in the Bay Area. And you could pitch yourself as a potential, you know, partner for them, for their companies. Other places where, of course, small companies are hiring, companies like you, teams like you, are places like Elance and Odesk. And, and you know, these places are full of low-end providers, so you're going to have to compete with those low-end providers. But, but there, are, there are lots of looking for people through those, looking for development partner organizations through those places. Yeah, you know, I thought the model Elance and Odesk, but um, I kind of prefer to stay away because uh, at the early stage, uh, you know, the product development are to prove yourself that kind of dollar value is really low. Um, you know, so I stayed away from it. But uh, I certainly like the idea of, like, you know, connecting with the uh, with the incubators. Um, but this is, um, Elance is, you know, I hired our um, development agency in India through Elance. Elance through Odesk. Okay. So most entrepreneurs are using Elance and Odesk to find development teams. 
Okay. So we'll try and answer us, Mona. Yeah. But yet, uh, systematically, there is a very specific press to be able to compete in that kind of a network because it's a very, you know, it's a very crowded network to differentiate and to establish yourself in a place like that is not so easy. Okay. And as Terry says here, is that you in, in in the public chat? She says I would even target smaller cities such as Austin, New York, Chicago, Denver. New York is not a smaller city at all, but it, you mean is a smaller ecosystem. So incubators in those ecosystems as well, and you could try to contact them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, probably, yeah. Good luck. All right. Thank you. I appreciate. You're welcome. Uh, we are going next to uh, Arvind Avinash on the line. I have some difficulty getting on the phone. No, we're going to. Our Avinash is not called in. All right, we're going to go to. Let's see. Hi, this is Terry Likens, and I am the uh, founder of Dies Mias, which is um, Portuguese Latin uh, for uh, my Lord, my God. And what we're doing is we are creating... Just one second, but this is, uh, it, sounds, it's, it looks French to me. Um, we, we just made a twist of it. It's really D-E-U-S-M-E-U-S, -E -E but the X... In regards to our 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 uh, our, our cross um, logo up there, and then with our our compass. And my apologies, the um, I didn't realize that my slide would look out of um, out of slant here. So so please uh, forgive me um, about that, but uh, don't let it hold you back against um, what greatness I do hope that we'll be bringing. All right, well, tell us what you're doing. Sure. Um, um, me us again is focused on uh, creating a platform called Journey, which is um, first step for people to uh, personalize their uh, beliefs in something bigger, such as God, um, Christ, whatever your belief is. It's the uh, platform that will allow you to connect with spiritual directors um, to have essentially a, a, a personal mentoring relationship so that you really get, get the fullness out of um, your life. Um, I have a co-founder. His name is uh, Marty Dietrich. Um, sadly, he couldn't be here today. He's an expert in uh, Internet um, uh, marketing and so on. My experience has been in IT and um, I had a startup called Telepathy, which which uh, focused on mental health, but I didn't um, get the action as needed, so I pivoted and made it into a spiritual uh, journey. So where we go with this is uh, the beginning. We're, uh, uh, it, it's it's on this in this purpose and understanding that there is a a higher higher spiritual calling, whatever that may be. It's just a matter of there's this gap uh, between between us and whatever that may be. Um, so we we think we figure it out. If you'd like to uh, go to the next slide, sometimes we think we figure it out, and that you know life is pretty straightforward. And you know if you do this, you do this, but you know we know that that's not necessarily the truth. Um, there's actually a science behind that. So if we could progress. So when you look at the science of faith in general, um, there's actually a psychological uh, aspect in, in regards to the biological um, progress that we, we have. An example is, and I take the first one there, trust versus mistrust. As, a, as an infant, um, in primal faith, you, you're either going to trust something or you're not. And as we grow older, um, we, we go into various phases of our faith and, um, and, and our belief system. And depending on our choices, um, it affects whatever it is. Eventually, we hope that we get to the point um, that we understand that faith is bigger than our own beliefs and that it's uh, personally a kind of a mental uh, experience of, you know, am I living a life of integrity or am I having a life of regret and despair? And, and our uh, 
purpose is, uh, uh, you know, played out that way. So if we can go to the next slide. So basically, here we are alone together all through, um, through our lives. And as society progressed, we have come up with all these technological fill for that gap between wanting to be a part of something bigger and um, trying to find meaning in our life and to express ourselves and to, to get input from, from the world around us. And this is where I personally believe that uh, Journal will be able to help. Because as, as wonderful as these social networks are and all this technology, we are still with a thirst. Next slide, please. And with that, you know, it's often the problem is purpose, is understanding our purpose. And, and when you think about the development, how do we figure that out as we grow? We can consult experts or we can do nothing. We can actively search where, you know, it's an ongoing experience or maybe even reaching out online since now that really expands our view. And then, of course, there's the traditional offline resources. Next slide, please. Oh, so I thank you. So when we look at, um, we're going to narrow this down. I just want you to kind of understand, um, I understand about um, uh, about faith and things. Worldwide, you see, um, Eight in ten people identifying with a religious group. A comprehensive uh, demographic study of more than 230 countries and territories conducted by the Pew Research Center um, Forum on Re uh, Religion and Public Estimates they were, that are 5.8 billion religiously affiliated adults and children around the globe, representing 84% of the 2010 world population of 6.9 billion. Next slide. We'll let it specifically here from the United States. This gives you an even, you know, narrower um, a, a view of the market that we'll be seeing from here in uh, Austin, Texas, and in the United States. Um, it just it gives us an understanding of, of the place at hand, the stakeholders, and how are we going to meet? Uh, how are we going to uh, uh, meet and fulfill the uh, needs of those stakeholders? Is we're going to create a platform that allows credibility, reliability, and intimacy. And of course, that being focused on the self-orientation of the uh, spiritual seeker. And uh, next slide. And it looks like, uh, in general, is the actions of not just journey, but the uh, stakeholders involved. And, and the conversations that will be had in the very personal conversations will allow us to build trust between the directors and the seekers. And what it looks like is, or how do we get there, is uh, the solution actually provides the three most important things for any success, inspiration, organization, and support. Next slide. It looks like for spiritual directors, it's the ability to elevate their services uh, and being able to put that more out in the uh, 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 public eye by providing uh, video introductories in a, in a database, allowing them to have a CRM type of uh, service with scheduling and reminders, providing video teleconferencing from any platform, um, payment services for the uh, additional e-commerce stuff that they may have, such as audio books, maybe webinars. Um, and for spiritual seekers, it, it, it gives them the content needed, the, uh, the, the database of spiritual directors so that they can, they can find someone to, to really you know, uh, met with and to come, come together with and to be able to gold track and, and have private forums so that people can speak their mind in a safe um, environment and uh, be able to provide their experiences and grow. So when you look at the business model, next slide, Actually, we are somewhat of a SaaS and e-commerce and, and community. And in, in, in you look at that uh, in regards to the three aspects of inspiration, support, and organization, this slide kind of demonstrates um, and gives valid, uh, validity to um, the plan that we would have. So uh, you comment so far, um, trying to create a place where this kind of spiritual teachers come and hold seminars and, uh, you know, sell their books and, and so on and so forth. That's great. Mm -hmm. And and it sounds like the seminars are available to or webinars are available to the 
speakers for free and then they pay for the books and, and other videos, perhaps, whatever. Well, what actually... One... Um, yeah, go ahead. What I was going to say is, um, in, in researching what spiritual directors do, um, and I, I talk about it on the next slide, if, uh, uh, if you would, about growth opportunities. Uh, there's a growing demand for spiritual directors. What uh, Right now, on the average, a spiritual director will get anywhere here in the United States between, uh, excuse me, between $80 and $150 a month for personal counseling. Think of it as mental health counseling. It's the same thing as mental health counseling, except it's um, spirituality. Um, people will pay for that. The health of difference between the two in terms of business models and so forth. Mental health related stuff are part of the U.S. healthcare system. Good. So with, with this being said, um, we started um, researching about the demand for spiritual directors. Um, for all the major universities here in the United States that, that have some sort of spiritual direction um, certificate, their, um, their uh, what do you call it, enrollment rate for those classes uh, go up or have went up 300% per uh, year, I think it was. And it's actually growing. And not only that, but, um, if, and I'm just going to take this uh, one particular faith as as example. Um, my co-founder is is Catholic, and one of the one of the uh, practices of that is just that to to meet once a, uh, once a month and have these discussions and and allow the spiritual seeker to um, to, to find life and to find that connectivity in and and so it's 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 in characteristic of of following beliefs, uh, various beliefs, what, you know, whatever they may be, uh, to 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 try to incorporate that let meaning me, into people's lives. You neither let me finish my question nor ask. My yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. So the the difference between mental health counseling and spiritual counseling from a business point of view is that there is a business work around mental health counseling. It reimburses it and, and blah, 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 and, and people are willing to pay for it. But spirituality is supposed to be, at least in society today, it is expected to be free. You go to church or you go to a temple and, and maybe you put some decisions in and, and stuff, but you're really in a spiritual order. You are sort of expected to be participating free of charge. Absolutely, and I, under, I understand that. So the idea is that there is there is a an enclosed in, in environment that this will that this will take off in, and that it's already out there and, and growing. Um, it's it very similar. I understand uh, your your comments about uh, being a, as a part of healthcare, but this is becoming more and more prevalent, particularly in a variety of faiths. Pay. Somebody needs to pay for this to be a business. Somebody yes, ma'am. So, so the spiritual directors um, will pay um, approximately, let's say, two hundred dollars a month for our services. Because really, what it is is it, and this is something that we've um, uh, tested in our surveys with our uh, spiritual directors in our surveys, and that's an acceptable thing because what we're doing is we are helping them um, uh, and position their business there for people who are actually seeking um, answers, whatever that may be. And it's very successful. And um, some of the uh, validations that I would invite our uh, listeners and our viewers to, to check out is go out on LinkedIn and uh, look up some of the uh, spiritual direction uh, discussions. And you, you, can, you can hear what the spiritual directors are, are, are encountering and where, where they are. I, I what spiritual directors pay to be on your System. Are you are you expecting that they would then generate business from the seekers? Absolutely, because it's a focused area. It's it's like, you know. In short, I would like to um, generally say that we would like to be the Google of uh, spiritual directions. That when you have a question, okay, that no. it's hey, somewhere that you would immediately want to go to. Harry, Harry, please slow down and answer my questions. Because the only way I can help you is by. Keep yeah. 
on issues that matter, not just going off on tangents and, and painting big pictures. Yes, ma'am. Is there evidence that seekers are willing to pay in the same way that families of mental health patients are willing to pay counselors and psychiatrists and psychologists and psychoanalysts? Is there evidence that spiritual seekers are willing to pay these spiritual counselors? Ma'am, um, again, it's, it's uh, of the average, for instance, if you were to look out on SDI, which is spiritualdirectorsinternational.org, they currently make, um, now they're a nonprofit group that um, just helps list and train some of the spiritual directors. Their sales over the past year, I think, was um, almost a million dollars. Um, not only that, but on average, the spiritual directors, again, are 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 averaging anywhere between eighty and one hundred and fifty dollars a month for this, this service, and are are able to do that successfully. Okay. Seeing that this is uh, some uh, th there's some proxy in the mental health world, and you're trying to move that to the mental health world, and and there is some at least some evidence that there is. The willingness in the spiritual seekers to pay for such a service. Absolutely. Again, on the previous slide, um, to give you an idea, SDI started in 1990 with only about 400 um, uh, directors and is now well over 6,000 in 2013. So you can see that, and these are paying uh, spiritual directors just to be listed as a part of um, uh, organization. Um, so you know, it just shows that not only is there a business for, for, from the spiritual directors, but also a, um, a business for those spiritual directors. And what we're doing that differentiates us from any of the others out there is that we are trying to utilize the expertise of, of marketing and, and, and the technology to be able to get them exposed so that people who are seeking. Uh, we're trying to do, um, but this is not a fundable business at this point. Um, no. We're not ready to, uh, you're going to need to get to some level of validation, including showing that you can get uh, both spiritual directors to pay as well as seekers to pay the spiritual directors to value the model. And, and also, it's a very small percentage of, of the population that is willing to pay today, I believe, for spiritual counseling. So I think your TAM is fairly small. Uh, you know, if you wow. disagree with that, you're going to need to pro prove that to investors that you Understood. can you know, multi-hundred uh, million dollar business. So, so let me just let me just say um, one, one or two things on the follow up with that. So again, understanding the Catholic, um, if we were to focus on one area right off the bat, would be the Catholic faith, which is the largest or one of the largest um, uh, faith out there, and this is a part of their practice. So, if for instance, if we were to get the um, the approval, let's say from the Vatican, is is grandiose as that may be, um, that that would be almost an instant, um, uh, uh, you know, it would be like Oprah coming in. In fact, this is a this is a very point that I want to say. People will pay for Oprah and their spiritual direction and their spiritual um, uh, classes through Deepak Chopra and, and so on, but uh, they're relying on celebrity a bit. We're do, we are no, digging, that is, that is digging how, deeper. That is how the mass behaves. The mass like like celebrity. This is human nature. Oh, I understand. Behavior. Understood. But even but with that said, we are going grassroots. Mass behavior. Okay. Much just like that, that is mass behavior and that is human nature. Oh, yeah. And I, I think it's a wonderful thing. I really do. I'm just saying that what differentiates even that from us is that we are getting at the grassroots where the real people in NA communities, so that no, even the Oprah. Is is actually? Oh, I apologize. Just Okay. So there is there is a certain industry, certain norms 
terms of what gets funded, what doesn't get funded. You need to learn those. You need to learn how to build a business, and it may become a fundable business at some point. It may not. You may still. You may be building this business organically, and that's fine too. And if you decide you want to work with us. To go up in doing either of those, they're here to help you. But oh, yeah, yeah, and I apologize if it came off um, that I was defensive. I'm just very passionate about it. So I really appreciate your um, your ending and your support. So my apologies if anything negative came across. That's not what I mean, just very passionate, that's all. Right, so my job is to, to figure out to put one foot before the other in building a business. And what I'm trying to do is to get you to focus. We we have we teach very specific methodology of doing that, mm -hmm. and especially for a very large number of entrepreneurs out there who never built businesses before. This is incredibly useful because you make assumptions. Otherwise, you make assumptions, and you you know um, you think that you can do things which are actually not doable. At the same time, there are things that are doable that you don't think about that would actually help you progress in building a business. So what we try to do in 1M1M is teach you the mechanics of how to build a business. You're you talking about spiritual counseling. We are talking about entrepreneurial counseling. It's, it, it is related. I see that. Absolutely. Well, one other thing that I would mention in, in regards to the validity is if you visit uh, dsmeals.com or um, com. There is a, a launch page there that allows um, interested parties to uh, um, to be listed, so that as we begin to um, unveil the beta of this, that we can have them a part of um, a part of this. And so far, we've been out there for about a month, and we have about. Uh, and mind you, this is um, not advertised by any means other than a few conversations that I've had on LinkedIn because we've been busy preparing. And um, we already have over 500 uh, uh, spiritual directors and spiritual seekers that are signed up waiting for information. So, Okay, so all that is good news. Why don't you, uh, why, uh, why don't you, uh, um, you know, wait a bit. We will come back to how we work with people later in the show. Let me finish working with Avinash, and then we'll move on to Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Up next, are you on the call? I've got the call too many times. If it happens, then I'm going to skip on and, and, and I'm not going to spend any further time to try to give you an opportunity to pitch. Everybody's time, and that's not cool with us. So I was sending me private messages saying that he's in the call, Maureen. <laughs> Maureen says, I'll be not going to say something, for God's sake, say something. If you call. who are in the room, please feel free to introduce yourself in the public chat and, and tell us where you're joining from, what you're working on, you know, how you hear about 1M, 1M, and so on and so forth. Maureen, are you there? I see people in the room, but I don't see a, I don't see a lot of introductions. Uh, I am going to skip Avinash. Go on to other things. So, if you want to call in, here have the teleconference information. Um, if you want to, the dial number is one six five zero four seven nine three two zero eight. Access code is six six zero. Three two three five three one. 
let us know in public chat that you're planning to call in so we know to call you to speak. If what we do is in need of referrals, so please do refer people to 1M1M. And here we work. So if you are looking for help in building your business, which pretty much is the main reason why people come to these sessions, you know, our five to seven minute um, explanation of how uh, we work with entrepreneurs. So everything that I'm going to talk about is at 1M by 1M.com. Again, our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and then beyond in annual revenue, build a million dollars in global GDP and 10 million jobs. Uh, we start you off with our blog, completely free, and there are tons of resources for you to learn. And um, we also have the Entrepreneur Journeys book series. Uh, we have published four volumes of Entrepreneur Journeys, and today there is a, a fifth volume, which is a collection of essays and interviews that is coming out called The Other 99%. So all this kind of emphasizes our, to stent our methodology, our case studies, and gives you a bunch of, of um, you know, material with which to start spring your own entrepreneur journey. The whole point of our program is to put you in touch and put you in contact with other people's success entrepreneur journeys so that you can learn from that process. These are all available on Amazon, Kindle, uh, and, and some of them uh, in, in India, some in Flipkart. Is, um, the book that we're going to talk about today is a Kindle book, though. Um, this is what the site looks like. There are tons of videos, actually. On the site, you will find lots of videos which are essentially expressions of the program and video FAQs. So there's, you know, certain ki certain questions that come up all the time. And, um, we we basically take questions and we've turned them into FAQ videos. That's very helpful for you to understand and evaluate the program. So there's an 89th round. Table. And we are here every week. In October, you will be here all five Thursdays of October. And uh, we have had thousands of people participate in these roundtables, using them for their for whatever they need. And you are very welcome to continue using them. Um, you go to the free public roundtable page on the um, top navigation bar to register, uh, to book your slots, to pitch, um, more than send you instructions and so forth. And we have a premium program, which is which offers you extensive methodology guidance, all this stuff that we're talking about, to um, put, put one foot before the other in building your business in a very granular way. This is what we do. We teach you. We um, give you a full curriculum of video lectures and case study-based curriculum. We with business development, we are deeply connected in the entrepreneurship ecosystem of the world, in being very deeply into Silicon Valley. We are headquartered in Silicon Valley, but we operate in a lot of ecosystems. We are you in connections into customers, channel partners, um, give you similar kind of strategy consulting that you the format that you're seeing is the same, but members only for our private roundtables, which are for members only. We have financing. We teach you how, what is financeable, what is not financeable, and we teach you how to become financeable, what you need, how to line up your ducks to become financeable, and when you are ready, we introduce you to investors. We help you with media relations. We have your love cloud in the media. We let that cloud to work on behalf of our entrepreneurs. We a million dollar club, um, so if you can meet some of our million dollar club members who have crossed a million to a million in revenue. We all published an ROI equation, so quantify the 1M, 1M value equation is a link that you have on the website. It's accessible from the website. You will be able to see how we analyze ROI. We offer $375,000 a year plus 5 to 10% equity worth of value program for $1,000 annual membership fee. 
with a high value program if you use the program effectively the way it's meant to be used. Um, self assessment is a good kind of calib self calibration tool that you should use. Um, you can you must ask yourself these questions and, and answer them and for your curriculum modules for the premium members to have bridge your knowledge gaps there. You um, have material on the site about what to expect from the premium program, the FAQs, and so forth, which will help you evaluate whether you want to join or not. We have over 600 case studies of successful entrepreneurs. So in a sense, you know, 600 entrepreneurs at this point are teach you this program, not just Shromana, not just the 1M1M one one team. It's, it's a large number of very successful people who have taken the time to share their stories and their strategies with, with you. Get a you know, synthesized framework from which to absorb that material and put the strategies back into practice to aid your own entrepreneurial journey. It's very powerful and very inspiring. I also have synthesis of the case studies in form of video lectures. So you are you have curriculum on a web self service mode. It's video lectures and case studies. Um, we teach you seven core topics: bootstrapping, positioning, market sizing, customer validation, uh, financing, customer acquisition, and team building. And then we have a bunch of elective modules that are different kinds of businesses. So all the web businesses fall under Web 3.0 and e-commerce. And we have cloud computing and business solutions. Outsourcing and consulting, mobile apps, healthcare IT, online education, gaming, and so forth. Our view is lean, capital efficient, bootstrap startups. We respect your cash and we want you to be successful without having to put in too much money. And if ready, when ready, you can go access financing if you so choose to, but we don't force you into a financing round. We, as I said, we do a lot of media for our entrepreneurs. If you go to the press page and you go to coverage of premium members, you will see the kind of coverage our members are getting. We also give you access to our social media channel, which is humongous at this point. You can uh, you can actually use the 1M 1M channels to put your messages through to Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, we cover you on our blog quite extensively and a lot of um, Investors, customers, channel pay partners are monitoring these blogs, so you make connections through that. An affiliate program, so if you're trying to partner with us, um, affiliate is one model, which is a 10% uh, affiliate commission. We also have our models like the incubator in a box. Um, our roundtables every Thursday in October, you can come and pitch. Uh, Vidya 2020 is Another book that I published, which if you're in India or in a developing country, you can use one of these $45 billion ideas and, you know, build it. We'll be happy to help you. And the one I'm incubator in a box is our other partnership model, which enables any company, angel organization, VC, government, entrepreneurship development organization, university, whatever, to easily, rapidly, and affordably launch or extend an incubation program. And we have a lot of, customer, a lot of uh, corporates that are working using this right, right now. So we, as I said, we are launching a new book today, The Other 99% Entrepreneur's Fortune in the Middle of the Pyramid. And I will take a few minutes to read you a chapter from it quickly. Um, and what it says in the introduction is, I'm searching for a viable pragmatic framework for capitalism 2.0. This kind of essays introduces my current thinking the basis for the One Million by One Million initiative. So today is called How to Reduce Infant Entrepreneurial Mortality. Since the 2008 financial crisis, intellectuals have had to ask themselves, does capitalism still work? I have this question for several years now, beginning with a seminal column I wrote for Forbes, Capitalism's Fundamental Flaw. Two particular problems stand out. First, capitalism has been hijacked by spaders, Second, the system enables amassing wealth at the tip of the pyramid, leaving most of society high and dry. Both problems have resulted in a highly unstable, volatile world, world that jitters and shocks markets periodically, leaving financial carnage and must scale human suffering. 
So what is the solution? Ideals of democracy and capitalism be combined to establish a more robust, stable system. I believe so. Here's how. We need to use the fundamental principle of capitalism, the creation of value that people are willing to pay for, and apply it to the middle of the pyramid on a global scale. In other words, we need large numbers of entrepreneurs who are willing and able to build products and offer services and address demand from certain specific segments of customers. To teach them how to build businesses that can become sustainable, profitable, and create jobs. We need to also teach them to grow by applying the same kind of methodology and discipline that traditionally a venture-funded company may use. It's about the role small businesses play in, grow, in growing economies and creating jobs. However, as it stands, in America alone, 600,000 businesses die in the vine every year. This colossal infant entrepreneur mortality is a product of colossal levels of ignorance about how to build and sustain business. I have studied some of the reasons behind this mortality. One reason is that entrepreneurs have been fed a myth that entrepreneurship equals venture capital. The myth that business schools incubate every part of the ecosystem that is supposed to teach good business practices reinforces this myth. The reality is over 99% of entrepreneurs who go out to seek financing get rejected. There are primary reasons behind this phenomenon. Most business opportunities seeking venture capital are too small and too slow growth to fit the venture model. The second, entrepreneurs often go to VCs too soon and without doing adequate homework. There's actually a method to the madness of entrepreneurship. While the character traits that support entrepreneurship, courage, tolerance for risk, resilience, persistence, cannot be taught, the method of building businesses can and should be. Taught. In fact, it should be taught not just at elite institutions, but at every level of society en masse. If we democratize the education and incubation of entrepreneurs on a global scale, I believe that it would not only check the infant entrepreneur mortality, it would create a much more stable economic system. Why? Because the middle of the pyramid, large numbers of small and medium businesses, is out the reach of the speculators. If they do something of value that their customers want, they can build stable businesses. They may grow 300% a year. They may never become billion-dollar enterprises. That's okay. Too energy in the business world today is being spent on high-growth businesses go after very large business opportunities. All of the startup incubation ecosystem of the world focuses on the venture-fundable businesses only. As a result, Less than 1% of the world's entrepreneurs are able to access high-caliber incubation support. My thesis is that the other 99% entrepreneurs hold the key to capitalism 2.0, a system of distributed democratic capitalism, still focused on creating value, generating wealth, creating jobs, but not so focused on speculation. Mercantile capitalism has hit its limits. Democratic distributed capitalism will allow the pendulum to swing and hand power back to the value creators. The good news is that in this era of high bandwidth connectivity, most parts of the world can access online learning and use online channels to build businesses. Let's say we digitally teach and incubate millions of online businesses over the next few decades. We teach them fundamentals like entrepreneurship equals customers plus revenues. Finance is optional, exit is optional. From Africa to Indonesia to Colombia to Maine, generations of entrepreneurs proliferate. They are all given the opportunity to access certain methodology and knowledge. What do you think will happen? Infant entrepreneur mortality will drop. The number of entrepreneurs will learn to grow their businesses. An entrepreneur who would have otherwise done $1 million a year with proper support, will perhaps do $5 million a year. And quite possibly, larger numbers of entrepreneurs would qualify for venture capital. They would not go too soon to seek capital. They wouldn't be were ready, their ideas are validated, when investors are likely to invest in them. A robust pipeline of fundable businesses will develop. These, then, can attract capital 
and grow faster. Coming chapter, and um, Maureen has given you the link to uh, to the Kindle page. You can download it for your Kindle or for the Kindle app on your smartphone or iPad, whatever. Um, this is pretty much what I had for today. So if you want to call in and ask questions, you can do so using the instructions on the screen. Anybody? Comments, thoughts, ideas, interactions? We'd love to meet you. reluctant to go back to Avinash's slides. Avinash, if you're on the call, you're welcome to ask questions, but I'm not particularly willing to go back and ask and go back to your slides. I've done that three times already. I'm not going to do it again. Hello? Hello? Yes. Uh, can you guys hear me? you. Sorry. I could not connect earlier. Anyway, uh, I'm to build a platform for uh, association. It's from because gone are the days where you do you know custom developed product, but now it's all customer developed products. To have the insights of the customer uh, who uses the product, so you you involve the customer in product development right from ideation. I'm going to build a platform which gives. Uh, uh, facilities and features for customers to engage, uh, for companies to engage the customers in addition and getting their, uh, c getting the consumer insights and also in shaping and installations and getting uh, feedback from the customers and also create because you, you get a chunk of your customers when you, you create and customers are more loyal to you when they are a part of the entire process of product development. And, uh, of this kind of model, if you, if you look at a company called Corky out of New York, that not only does this kind of crowdsourced customer validation, they also actually provide the manufacturing for innovators to actually bring those, build the products and bring them to market on a royal yeah, sharing basis. Yeah, I understand. But um, the thing I'm trying to bring in here is um, to be more organized because in the product development, it's not just you know, take the customer feedback and then you you, you put it up for sale. You there's a whole lot of uh, uh, procedures and processes that goes into developing the product. So ideation. So, uh, I actually giving you feedback that this concept is a uh, is a dated concept that that concept exists. I'm giving you. I'm telling you that it is a good idea. You need to defend the idea and you. You don't need to dismiss other people's work because they are doing very good work and it's a large company at this point. So what I'm giving you is a referral to something that is working. You should check it out, study them, and understand what they're doing. Uh, uh, yeah, I've actually uh, looked at Porky and uh, several other co-creation sites as well as uh, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding and uh, freelancing websites. So what I'm trying to build kind of uh, blends everything. It, it's got freelancing because when you break up the product uh, development, there are several micro projects. So several micro projects will be taken up by customers or it could be taken up by various other stuff, uh, service providers or developers, manufacturers. Um, so the entry chain plays a role in developing the product. Means they have a stake in bringing the product from creation to the market and uh, bring in revenue to the entrepreneur or whoever is behind that. So that's why uh, we have come up with a platform called Scoop Stake. It means it really has a stake in in this uh, product, um, uh, product, see the light of the day. So uh, and it, it's a blend of crowdsourcing and freelancing. Mixed with uh, uh, you know creation. Yeah, it's the concept, and 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 it's a good idea. So going. And 
and I, I'm actually based out of Bangalore, and I am looking at launching because uh, if you the entire freelancing market, the biggest market is in US, and the second biggest market uh, that I, that uses the freelancing sites is in India. So uh, I have to be in US. And it's very important for me to capture. I previously worked with Verizon in in US, and uh, later I moved back to India, and I've uh, I've launched uh, Scoopstick. It's still in uh, about to be launched. It's a, it's a month away before it gets launched. So I just um, want to share the concept with you and get your feedback uh, as to if I can, you know. As I said, I think it's a good concept, and the concept is out there. It's a validated concept. People are doing, you know. Yes businesses in you know around this yeah. concept so yeah, it's but, not fun. Yeah, but the biggest challenge is going to be uh, in getting the first initial customers you know as uh, you have yourself uh, put in your one of your blogs so you, there is a value of depth so i have to survive the world the challenge is every business in launching every business is to get that first set of customers and getting your concept validated that's on your product, customer buying. Because remember, for every idea that actually comes into fruition and becomes a business, there are probably, you know, a hundred of the same ideas that die, that divine for execution thoroughness. When, you know, this is a debate that comes up all the time. Is should you do your idea in a stealth mode and should you kind of, you know, try to be as confidential as possible, as private. And I don't just do not believe in any of this stuff because ideas are a dime a dozen. Can you execute on it is the real determination, de determining factor in whether you're going to get anywhere or not. So, okay. so next week, Chan, I've been bootstrapping all, all the while. It's been like four or five months, and we have built the product. And uh, uh, before I launch, I just want to, I just, Took a step back and I was, I'm now one, you know, contemplating whether I should launch in US instead of launching from India. I don't have enough visibility into what have you done and in, in the in the specifics of your business to uh, you know what segment are you going after and and so on and so forth. So I haven't really worked on your business to be able to make that judgment. You can't make that judgment in vacuum. You have to make your position your product. You know, any product that you want to bring to market, whether even if it's a platform or an exchange, it has to be positioned. So we have a lot of, you know, exchanges, both case studies-wise as well as people who are trying to build exchanges and, and so on and so forth. So case exchanges is a well-known business model. On the Internet side, there, it's a, it's a well-known business model, but you have to position that exchange. One of my favorite case studies that we teach is an exchange of artists, you know, where artists basically apply their work and this exchange brings artists and art consumers and they create prints of the art and, and, and ship them over. This is a company that, it's an exchange and, and it, it basically three people, three time people, the entrepreneur and a, a customer service person and another you know, person helping him, them are running a five million dollar business, whole business, and then everything else on the logistics side and so forth is outsourced. So pretty much anything can be done. You do execute really closely and flawlessly, and you have to position also with with a lot of precision. So. In one one of them, I find myself doing probably the bulk of the coaching on positioning related stuff and um, you know, how to mitigate these chicken and egg problems that entrepreneurs face all the time. Um, so, so those you know those are the challenges that you need to work on. And and I don't have enough information about your business to be able to give you off the cuff answers. And, you know, I am not known for giving off the cuff answers. I'm a very thorough person. And the, the culture that we have established in One Million by One Million in our entrepreneurs who follow this program is culture of thoroughness. You want to do a very thorough strategy work before you launch anything. This is just what we believe in.
Mm-hmm. That makes-, makes a lot of sense. So, um, uh, so last question is: What account, according to you, should I watch out for? Is any any any, any uh, you know serious stuff that I sh- should uh, look you know be aware of? Like one of the big first to anticipate in a business like yours is trying to boil the ocean. Define very, very specifically what is your target market, what is your positioning, and so forth. If you look at Quirky, it's a very tightly defined company. Yeah, they're more into innovative products, something new and innovative. Innovative products uh, only. Yes. And they provide the manufacturing on that. That's a very tightly defined position, exactly. a very tightly uh, defined Quirky, property. Yes. Yeah, actually, they do their own manufacturing. They have the yes. manufacturing support. What we do on Scoop Steak is we break it up, and even the manufacturing is done by everybody. It's, it's freelancing That's world. Cool. That's fine. All that is fine, but you have to, again, what my guidance point is, don't try to boil the ocean. Try to be very specific. In being. I'm asking you the question, how you differentiate with Quirky. I'm, asking, I'm giving you Quirky's example to show you how, how precise they are in their positioning, and you need equi- equally, equivalently precise positioning for yourself. All right. Okay. So, uh, anybody else has any questions, comments? This is Anthony again. Yeah. Go ahead. I forgot to ask you this question. I mean, there are a lot of people are building the service business. The cost always comes up. You know, we are building like a boutique. And the high value um, services from India is, the, you know, in the people who might try to hire the people who have the choice to come back to India now still want to be involved in technology. With the level, is this still a sustainable model? I want you to be honest uh, feel like on that because a lot of these customers we got because of uh, I know in the past and the reference. And you know, right now, we really don't have like a you know, proper sales model yet. I mean, evolving towards that. So, uh, this able model to build like you know a ten dollar business. You know, everything is possible if you execute well. It depends on what sales strategy you put in. It depends on how well you execute. It depends on whom you recruit on your team, right? High quality boutique, the firm means to maintain that quality and that maintaining quality as the numbers grow is extremely difficult, especially in a place like Bangalore, I would say it's impossible. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Yeah. So if you want to do that, you're going to have to come up with a strategy on the talent end. Otherwise, people are not going to take your word for it. Sure. Most yeah. large companies, people who build large outsourced product development companies are full of freshers. I mean, persistent is full of freshers. And that's why people are going to hire you. Okay. The teams with uh, inexperienced people. So build the $10 million business, you need a very large number of, at least a significant number of senior people. And what is your strategy to build that team? Those senior people want to work with you versus other people. All these are questions that you have to answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it, yeah. Sure. Anybody else? Comments? There's, there's a bunch of people in the room that I don't think we've ever heard from. Uh, maybe it's you're attending for the first time. Uh, have to know who you are, where you're coming from, what you're working on. So please tell us in public chat who you are, or again. Well, this is Avinash again. I have uh, another generic uh, question. Uh, so post this chat, how do we get in, you know, be in, keep in touch with you, and how do we... Uh, Jared, I, the only way I work with people is through the 1M1M one program. So uh, from here on, the next step, you would have to join the program. If you join the program, we have a full process of how to help you. Okay, also help us in uh, raising funds? Yes, we do. Uh, but we have, to, you, we have reached a stage 
And we hope you reach that stage, but uh, you will, yes, we do help people in raising funds. Is there a one m by one m uh, fund, or you try to syndicate, or you just network? Well, we work with try... lots of investors. We don't have, we don't, we're not investors ourselves. Okay. I have questions. A uh, person also, there's somebody on our team who would be happy to talk to you and answer more of your questions. Her name is Irina Patterson. Uh, let's see, is Irina in the room? Irina not in the room today. Uh, Maureen will give you Irina's phone number and um, email address as well as uh, Skype. Her Skype is Irina underscore Patterson. Email is Irina at 1m by 1m.com. And we'll give you the phone number in public chat in a moment. Terry, I don't think you know how investors operate, so with all due respect, you need to learn to learn that. If you want to build a business, you need to learn that. What is the top-down number? 2.4 billion is a top-down number. The question is, can you build a business with your business model in that space and that you need a bottom-up analysis? And I see a bottom-up analysis in your business plan. Well, we, we explain in excruciating detail exactly what I mean and how you, want, how you need to use every single piece of the mechanics of how to build a business in the 1M program. And if you want to learn it from me, please feel free to join the program and, and you can learn every single detail of it within my power to teach you, I will teach you. Uh, sir, can you can you elaborate more uh, about the program? What once we register, how do how does this uh, entire program? Uh, I just uh, ten minutes of doing that. I don't think I want to repeat that. Why don't you play the recording and uh, and then okay. you should be able to now, learn it, here. The, the mode the mode of communication is going to be the same, like uh, a, a video uh, webinars and. Yes, it's a virtual, it's a 100% virtual program. So Maureen is offering you a contact person. Uh, if, you, if you want to talk to somebody, and ask these questions. They have more questions. Go through the website. There's tons of information on the website with all these FAQs. And you can also ask, uh, you can also call Ina Patterson at 7630124456. Her email is irina at 1m by 1m.com. And our ID is Irina underscore Patterson. We'll ask all your questions about the program. Anybody else? Any questions, comments? Thank you. So thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, your feedback. And uh, we really appreciate what you are trying to do. Um, and. Uh, uh, I'll probably, uh, you know, get in touch with you and uh, the program uh, in a, in, a, in a couple of weeks' time, um, and I look forward to working with you guys. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you don't have any other questions or comments, then we are going to get going. I'm sure all of you have lots of work to do. We certainly do. So we're going and uh, we will meet you back here next, next week. So as I said, every week we have uh, round tables and um, October 10th, 17th, 24th, 31st, all five Thursdays of October we have round tables. So that's our 90th to 194th series. And if you want to pitch and, and spend some time with me discussing your business, go ahead and book your slot and Maureen will help you learn how to prepare. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, thank you.